Welcome back. In the previous episode, we downloaded the software from AMCI, the sample program, opened it up, and I went in and I edited the, we'll call them the generic tags, to something specific to my application. And then I added just enough logic to make the axes move. And of course, the easiest instructions to do that with are the jog. Jog clockwise, jog counterclockwise. And these are add-on instructions that came with the sample. When we start looking at the program some more here in a second, you'll see that there are module-defined tags, and then there are add-on instructions and the add-on instruction tags that back them. In this episode, we're going to do some more motion. Let's get into motion here. Okay, here's our project. I added three more routines, manual, sequence, and stepper commands. We're going to look at those routines one at a time. I did want to point out that there are add-on defined instructions that came with this sample program. Everything you look at here, these are add-on instructions that will execute as they're described. There's also, when you add these SMD 17E2s down here, you also get a bunch of module defined tags. Before you added the AMCI steppers, you had this high speed counter, you had these module tags, you had the embedded IO, you had this group right here. And then we also have ethernet. Everything from here up was from the processor that you picked. Everything from here down is for the SMD 17E2. Now I see also there's 23. That's because I think this sample program is for both 17 or 23. Okay, so those are both notable. I'll collapse those back down. You can see most of what we're dealing with. In the main, I have three JSRs to jump to manual sequence and stepper commands. That misspelling is bugging me. There's nothing in the main program, but well, there's nothing in the main routine in the main program, but these three JSRs. And then in the manual program or the manual routine, this is logic that I added. I wanted a, and notice that anytime I'm going to have an operator intervention or an external public interface, I usually put HMI on it and it eventually ends up on a HMI. HMI for the x-axis clear errors. When I toggle this, it puts a six into this tag that controls the commands for the stepper device. And then it unlashes itself. So you don't have to toggle this on and toggle it off. It clears itself after it puts a six in there. If I want to do an immediate stop, I just push that button or toggle that bit. Now you see there's 11 in there and it, it's self-extinguishing. However, we do like to leave a zero behind after we've completed any kind of a function. This rung here, rung one, uh, puts a zero back in there when it sees this bit go off or when this rung goes true when this bit goes off. So I, right click on toggle bit that puts a six in there. It unlatches this bit. You don't have to toggle it on, toggle it off. And the next scan around because this is off, it one shots a zero in there. And of course we can't not have this one shot because then if you're not pushing that button, it's putting a zero in there all the time. Now we did the exact same thing for immediate stop. It's not an emergency stop, but it's just an immediate stop. You'll never see the state change. Okay, if you watch this logic and I right click, toggle bit, if you see an 11 here, or if you see this bit on, it's just a kind of an odd catch in the scan times of the my computer, my monitor, the video card. But anyway, you're not going to see it change, but it does. I put in these two rungs to clear errors and to do an immediate stop. Sometimes you're doing something and you don't want to hit an e-stop, but you want to stop. And these motion instructions, typically once you start them, once the dogs are loose, they're loose. 
You know, there's no turning off the request. You have to do an immediate stop or hit the e stop. Okay, I also needed a home function. Do you remember that in the dashboard that I had set the configuration for one of the inputs to be a home switch? And on our little fixture, I have two proxes and a micro switch to cover the home positions for all three axes. And this rung a logic, and there's many ways you can do this. Typically, when I'm just kind of exploring with a piece of hardware like this, I don't do a lot of deep analysis and how I want to write the code. I just throw something in there and then tweak it until it does what I want, and that's it. Now, if I was doing this for a customer, I would make sure it fit their standard operating procedure or their conventions. If I toggle this bit on, it moves a four in there and it untoggles this uh, axis homed. If I put a four in, if I toggle this on, I put a four in here and I could do that right now, but I see that my axis is at the far end. I don't want to wait for it to home. If this has already been homed and I latched on this bit right here, see on here, X axis homed. I'm not sure whether I'm, I'm going to use that or not. But in other words, I would like to have a bit that says that it was home because the this bit right here, uh, bit four of this status word, this is only true when it is at home. So we're using when it reaches home, says it's at home, to one shot in, latch that it's been homed, then unlatch our HMI button over here. Also, when it's at home, I put in an offset, a value, and keep in mind, because of the way I th this thing is built, and there's really no way to turn it around that I can see easily, the clockwise and counterclockwise rotation, I'm moving in a, in a negative direction from home. From home, zero, minus 500, moves it out 500 pulses. And then if you keep making moves, that number increases. Put in a minus 500 into a relative move target position. Now we'll look at that command later. So I put 500 in there, minus 500, and then put in a one, see, run relative move. And then that add on instruction, it moves in the negative direction, which is moving this thing counterclockwise. It homes clockwise, all moves are counterclockwise from home. It puts a one in there and then elsewhere when it's done, it's going to put a zero back in there. Here's my jog buttons, which we did last time. There's jog clockwise and jog counterclockwise. Okay, in the sequence, I have a rung up here that I've not used yet. If I latch on the bit, axis homed, and it's stopped, to say that it's ready, but I'm, I haven't used it for anything yet. Let's take this next rung. I want to do a uh, relative position moves. I put in a relative dis distance. Sometimes people call that incremental. You're going to move in increments. I'm going to move in an increment of 1,000 from wherever I at. It doesn't matter where I'm at. It's going to move in an increment of 1,000. Now, because of the way the encoder is attached to the axes, I have to use negative numbers if I want to move away from home. In this case, and I've got a thousand in there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and home this and then come back to this. You can't see it, but it's uh, cooking along on the X axis. And at some point you will see this bit come on right here. Status word zero bit four and reset the homing process. Just reach the prox stopped. And now it's actually homing it. it it went on past, now it's backing up to get a precise stop. Okay, see, now it's at home. The reason this isn't on anymore is because it moved the 500 offset. And I can show you that by going up here and look, motor position, encoder position, trap encoder position. I don't really need that. I'm using this to convert the motor position and the encoder position back to a positive number. Now, I'm not really using this yet. This is just logic I threw in there. And if I was writing a program 
for the sake of the maintenance people that have to work on this, I would probably use positive numbers for all of my functions, but I have to convert it to a negative number before I send it to the axes. Okay, so move to relative position one, which is 1,000. Now, I'm multiplying by minus one, this will become minus 1,000. You can't see it, but when I toggle this, the x-axis just jumped to 1,000. Remember, you can go back here and you can look. So remember, I was at 500 and I moved in increment or relative move of 1,000. Now you're sitting at 1,500. I have three of those. Okay, they all work the same. So once you get a little piece of logic that works for you, I just repeat it. This is relative position one. And keep in mind, because I'm using a an array, a single dimension array here for relative distance, I could just sequence between, in other words, I could use an indirect address or something to change this from one to whatever number I want that would send in the correct relative move. This logic's all the same. It's just three different relative distances. Okay, now I have an absolute. However, in order to do that, and now we go to stepper commands, all the logic in here remains unchanged except for that right there. Now, if I go over to my add-on instructions, I have an absolute move somewhere in that list right there. <laughs> well, yeah, it begins with an A, alphabetic order, I guess. So absolute move. Now, that is not in your sample program. I just went in, I put in, a, if it's equal to 10, I added an instruction by, you know, by double clicking, right? See right up here. I just typed this in AMC SMD 72 absolute underscore move. In other words, I added that in, I typed that in, hit enter and, and the instruction popped up. I did not create this instruction. I added it though. And then you have to fill out the information you need and you ought to be able to figure that out from the instructions you have like this one, you notice there's not a lot of difference. Okay, they have relative move X cell and D cell. I didn't give them a name. I just pumped, punched in constants. For program speed, see, I just have 10,000. Up here, it's, it's a tag that has a value in the register. And this is a better way to do it. This was down and dirty just to get something to work. So now what I'm going to do is I look over at my axes and I can see it's in the home position. Anywhere I go from here is probably good. So I'm going to go back to, if we look at the position that we're in by going to this routine, we can see we're at the offset from home. Go to sequence. Here's an absolute move that would go to 1000. So it would be a tiny little bump and it moved. And if we go back to the other routine, you can see that we're at a thousand now. And the relative moves, if we did a thousand, we would go from fifteen hundred for five from five hundred to fifteen hundred. But this was an absolute move. We are going to an actual position of one thousand. If we go to this one, it's going to go all the way across from the home offset to the other end. And if we go back here, you can see it increasing towards 130,000. Now, keep in mind that because of the counterclockwise, clockwise, it's stepping in a negative direction. But you see the motor position end up at 130,000, encoder position 129,997.98. For all intents and purposes, 130,000. And then the other move absolute move that we put in here was to go to 64,000, which is about halfway back towards the home offset. And you can see it's moving. Okay, let's switch over to a camera that's actually looking at the device. Okay, we're at 64,000. Let's go back to position one, absolute position one, which is 1,000. We check our status. 
and you see we're at 1,000. Motor position 1,000, encoder position 1,000. Absolute move 2. There's nothing different between these two rungs other than one is using absolute position array element 1 and the next one is using element 2. Other than that, the logic is the same. And back to halfway. Now, I have no idea how fast I can tell this thing to go. You can see right here I have in a speed of 10,000 for the absolute move. To change that, because I don't have a tag, I have to put it in the edit mode, and we'll make it 15,000 and see if we get away with that. We're at the mid position, so we can go in either direction. We'll go back towards home. That sounded like a bit of a strain. <laughs> now we'll go all the way to the other end at 15,000. And back to the midpoint. Anyway, so there you have it. We'll quit here. Now remember, you can copy this code. That's all there is to it. So real simple code.